Hey friendlies, I'm Carolyn and this is my RV life. Welcome back to the second half of a seminar that I gave at the 2018 Rubber Tramp Rendezvous on how I find the absolute best places to camp with million dollar views on public lands all across the country. I have spent the last two years traveling thousands of miles to 22 or 25 states from California to Florida and I have been able to find really amazing, wonderful, quiet, beautiful scenic camping spots in national forests and other public lands absolutely free even in a 29 foot class C RV. I'm now in a 24 foot but I did a lot of my exploring in a 29 foot class C. So in this seminar I gave not only the tools that I use, the technology, the maps and some practical tips and tricks for how I explore public lands and find wonderful places to camp and, and set up home for a couple of weeks. But I share all my secrets with you on how you can do it too in the second half of the seminar. In case you missed the first part, which was a lot of really practical information explaining what boondocking is, what dispersed camping is, explaining the difference between that and stealth camping and how you can figure out what the rules and regulations are. I talk about leave no trace and all kinds of really good information. I also shared in the first video what public lands you can find boondocking, free camping, or dispersed camping on. So if you don't, if you haven't seen that video, be sure to check here, up there I think, right? <laughs> be sure to check up there. I will put a link to that first video. Be sure to stay tuned to the end because I am going to be reviewing something I think everybody who lives in an RV, a van, or who travels in a car, or a bicycle, or an airplane, uh, I am going to do a review of this survival kit by uh, American Standard Premium. I'm also going to give one away to one lucky winner. So stay tuned to the end for this and enjoy the seminar. So who wants to talk about how to find good boondocking spots? Yeah. All right. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the tips and tricks of finding amazing boondocking spots. I'm going to share with you the tools that I use. Um, you know, some of this isn't going to be anything new. You can find it anywhere you go online. I learned it from the people that I follow and that I watch. I am also going to share with you, though, some of the things that I have learned in my two years on the road and traveling all across the country. Hopefully some practical advice on how to keep your eye out for the best um, boondocking spots. Million dollar views for free is what I like to say. As someone who is not retired and who does need to work, I often say, and this kind of started in the East Coast, a good boondocking spot for me has three S's. Solitude, sun for my solar, and signal for my cell because I need a cell signal in order to get internet to work. So oftentimes when I'm looking for uh, good boondocking, I'm looking for the three S's most of the time. And I'm gonna talk about those things a little bit as we go through some of these things. Number one, tools, maps and atlases. Is there anybody here who doesn't have a smartphone and doesn't navigate by your smartphone? There's a few people, okay. Uh, you can use paper maps. I really don't know how, I'm <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> I'm joking, but Delorme, uh, I think it's Delorme, D-E-L-O-R-M-E, and that's something I learned from Bob. Um, the atlases are, those are some of the best atlases, but if you are still using paper maps and you're not using a cell phone to navigate, uh, those are the best, just get some really good maps, get some good atlases. Uh, I personally, because I mean 25 states or whatever, 22 states I've been in, that's, that's a lot of paper that I'd rather not carry around with me, but if that's what you're still using to navigate uh just those are some really good and again that's just what i've learned from bob but i don't use them but as far as technology the my number one go-to resource for finding campsites all across the country is freecampsites.net has everybody heard of it yeah. What I love about freecampsites.net is that not only do they have, so I don't always stay in camp sites or campgrounds that are the exact GPS coordinates, but it often is just a guide. If I'm in an area in a city traveling through and I just want to know, especially in a bigger rig, what is accessible to me, then I'll go to freecampsites.net because they give you the places that other people have been, the places that, you know, whoever has the website, the places that they have been, the most important part of freecampsites.net and also Campendium. I know a lot of people use Campendium, C-A-M-P-E-N-D-I-U-M, I think. 
use Campendium in, at, at first, but I found freecampsites.net to be a lot more thorough and, and better for me. And the nice thing though about both of them is users leave their reviews. So they're gonna give you information on terrain, on what the views are gonna look like, how close they are to the cities, depending on how many people have been there and how many people have left reviews. They're also oftentimes gonna give you information on cell service, whether it's AT&T, whether you can get Verizon, whether you can get T-Mobile, and on the really good ones, even how many bars each has. So really, really helpful to read the reviews on those. They also give you GPS coordinates so that you can navigate right to the area. The other thing I really love that has was a lifesaver for me, being east of the Mississippi, how many of you are from that part of the country? Yeah, how many of you have like boondocked and camped in that part of the country? How many of you are familiar with the windy, what are they called, hollows? Yeah, the ho hollers, they're hollers. Oh my gosh, by the time I left Kentucky, I was like, I just want a straight road. <laughs> just give me a straight road. Uh, it's really challenging to find the three S's in boondocking in the east, that part of the country. Um, there's too many trees. <laughs> you know, I never thought I'd say that. There's too many trees. But you'd be lucky to get this much sunshine throughout the day to keep your solar, your batteries charged. So the good thing though about freecampsites.net is that uh, for rig size, so that's where I was going, those windy roads with dense forests are not conducive to giant rigs traversing into the wilderness to, to camp. That just doesn't work, you know, there's too many trees. Can't see the forest through the trees. Freecampsites.net will tell you up to 25 foot limit, up to 29 foot limit, unlimited limit. So that's one of the best things. And as I started to say, I often just use that as a guide because I look at that and I'm like, okay, in this national forest, because this is where a couple of campsites are, 29 foot, 35 foot rigs can go. So that means if I go into this national forest and explore some of the other roads, chances might be pretty good that I can find a place to camp. So freecampsites.net, huge, huge resource for me. Uh, the next resource is Google Earth. Does anybody use Google Earth to find a camping spot? It's fun, right? So you can just zoom in on an area, and I actually learned this from Nomadic Fanatic. I said none of this is new. We all just kind of recycle the same information. Um, you kind of zoom in on an area that you want to go to, and you can do this in a on a public land or in a city. I think that's where Nomadic Fanatic did it, and where I first learned. You can zoom in, like where's a warehouse district in a city? You know, where is something that looks like you know a develop a, a something being built or something demolished that I might be able to get away with parking overnight. But you can use it in, in National Forest. National Forest, it's hard because again, it's so darn wooded, <laughs> you can't see. It really works well for BLM. But if you turn on Google Maps and you really, I'm sorry, Google Earth, and you really zoom in, you can get down to street level view, road level view of an area that you want to visit. I have found a lot of campsites just by doing that. I've also been led on a lot of wild goose chases. So let me just say that, you know, you kind of have to be a little fearless. You kind of have to be curious and you kind of have to have a good attitude because I've been on a lot of wild goose chases. Uh, and, you know, that's, an, a, I guess, a, a practical tip. If you've been driving 10 hours and it's, you know, a half hour before dark and you think you want to go find a place to boondock, no, stay at Walmart. <laughs> Do yourself a favor and stay at Walmart. Um, or prepare, be prepared to just pull off wherever um, and, and go to sleep because uh, that's my thing. I, I never get any place really later than four, 3 or 4 o'clock. Um, because you're going to need to leave and sometimes a couple hours to do some exploring um, or you can end up someplace illegal or you could end up someplace that you're not comfortable, um, that's too noisy and trust me, how many of you have had knocks on your door at the middle of the night asking you to move? Yeah, I had what, five or six in my first year. <laughs> I thought rules didn't apply to me. I thought being a nomad meant I was an outlaw. <laughs> Police officers uh, corrected me really quickly on that one. I am not invisible. So yeah, Google Earth is a really good tip uh, to zoom in. What you're going to want to look for are open areas. So on BLM land, you can see the big round kind of pullouts. And BLM land in the desert, it's really easy because it's just all open space. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're always going to find a place to pull off. Coming into this road is a perfect example. They grade the roads so you have these big piles of rock on either side so that you can't, you can't just wander off anywhere you want. 
Uh, so Google Earth will help you navigate the roads, help you look for big open spaces where you can pull off and, and you can find camp. A practical tip on that, a lot of people say, how the heck do you find all these great spots? One is I'm kind of fearless. Um, I'm, I'm very curious. And another thing is I don't settle. Like I'll pull into a place and I'm like, yeah, this is okay. And if I have to, I'll spend the night there. And then I'll go out and I'll walk around. I was just recently up outside of Santa Fe and I found a spot, it was nice enough, it was okay. And I was there for two or three nights, but on my walks, I found an even better spot. And so I moved out to the even better spot, didn't see another person the whole time I was out there, and I stayed there for a week. So the beauty of our life is we get to be flexible. I don't have to be anywhere, it doesn't matter. I can stay here a day, I can stay here a month if I want, two weeks, right? <laughs> If you can be flexible, if you can be not afraid to just say, okay, you know, I, I want to move on, I want to explore something else, then you're going to, the whole world is going to open up to you as far as what you're going to be able to find. Another wonderful resource that I, I want to use more, I kind of always forget about, is the U.S. Public Lands app by Technomadia. It's a paid app. It's like $2.99 or $3.99. U.S. Public Lands. What is so awesome about that app, and when I usually use it, is I'll be driving along and I'll be like, hmm, this is cool. I hope it's public land. And so I pull up the national, the US public lands app. It zeroes in on my location and it tells me, because all the public lands are color coded, orange is BLM, green national forest, different shades of green. And it'll actually tell me whether or not I'm on public land. Uh, you can actually also search by city. I think there's a search bar. But that's been the most useful, the best way for me to use it is if I'm driving along and I'm just like, okay, I feel like stopping now. I've had enough. My three-hour limit. I don't drive more than three hours a day. And something will look interesting and I'll, I'll pull up the map and I'll say, oh my gosh, cool, this is BLM. Or it'll say, not right here, but out over there. So if I follow this road, I will eventually get to BLM land and so I can go explore this road. So very, two ninety nine, definitely worth it. I would highly recommend investing in that. Another tool that I use, and this is kind of a traveling tool more than a I want to camp and stay for a while boondocking tool, but it's my go-to resource if I'm traveling, if I'm on the road. I hate Walmarts. How many people love staying in Walmart? Yeah. <laughs> It's a last resort for me, and I've stayed in a few, but it's usually a last resort for me. Usually when I stay in a Walmart or a truck stop is I've gone on a wild goose chase and it didn't work out and I had to go back and stay in a Walmart. That's usually when I do. OvernightRVParking.com. Overnight. It's, it's a paid site. I think it's $24.99 a year. If you enter my email address, you get a free month, and my email address is... At Carolyn's RV Life, you'll get a free month, and I get a free month too, so it helps us both. Full disclosure here. Uh, overnight RV parking, and my, I think you just have to tell them now, Carolyn's RV Life, I think they have me down by now. So you get a free month. Overnight RV parking, but what I love about overnight RV parking, and there's a lot of apps that do the same thing, but this is the one I use, and it's been really helpful for me. They tell you the places that are legal, like in more developed areas. They'll tell you the Walmarts, they'll tell you the Cabela's, they'll tell you the Bass Sports Shops, they'll tell you the rest areas, they'll tell you the truck stops. So kind of the en route places that you might need to stop at uh, in your travels is what this this will do. Um, also, just kind of some sometimes off the beaten track, some things that you hadn't thought about. So every once in a while, it'll be like, yeah, there's a community park in what was it called? Home, New Mexico or something that you can stay at for the night. Uh, so sometimes you might find something there you don't find on campsites and vice versa. But between Google Earth, um, Google Earth, US Public and Lands, and FreeCampsites.net, those are all the tools I need to find great boondocking. Actually, I'll mention one other one I've used once. It's called Boondockers Welcome. Have you heard of it? Again, it's a paid site. And this is where people host you. So a lot of RVers, 
former RVers who have land or property or have enough space to host a, an RVer will join the site and set up a profile and they will, they put you in touch. So they put on the road RVers in touch with people who have space and you can go and stay at somebody's house overnight, you know, parked wherever on their land or on their property or whatever. I did this once in, uh, I think North Carolina, really nice lady, beautiful old farm that had been in her family for years. It was tucked away. It was absolutely gorgeous. And she just had an empty gravel a lot on her million acre place and stayed there for the night and it was beautiful you do have to be fully self-contained uh, so it is mostly for RVers not necessarily for vans but boondockers welcome I don't know that might have been $24.99 a year too I've only used it once but if that's something you might want to do it's a great way to meet people too if you want to do that but that was uh, that's what turned out really well and then of course you can always um, ask rangers St stop in the ranger station and rangers are I don't know about you, kind of my old rebel, but anybody in a uniform packing, you know, I kind of want to stay away. Uh, but you know, they're actually really nice, <laughs> especially when you're really nice. It took me a long time to mature and realize that, that if you don't go with an attitude, they're actually pretty nice, even when they're knocking on your door in the middle of the night. Uh, but yeah, rangers are extremely, extremely helpful. Uh, just go into uh, the ranger station and say, hey, I'm in a 35 foot class C and I want to go do some dispersed camping and I need an internet signal. Do you know where I can go? And most of the time they'll, they'll, they'll lead you in the right direction and they're very friendly. So I would recommend that. Locals too. Although I found on the East Coast that the locals <laughs> were like, I think I was traveling with Bob and I think we were in West Virginia or something, I don't know. And uh, we stopped at a roadside stand and we were like, where can we free camp around here? And they're like, uh. <laughs> there's a campground. I'm like, do you have to pay for it? Well, yeah, <laughs> free. You know, so the concept of boondocking, because it's just so, the national forests are so small. The East Coast is old. It's got a lot of old families, old property. And so when the national forest bought the land around them, they grandfathered in the people who had the land and the property. So you can't, it's really hard to go into a national forest in that part of the country and not see people, homes, people living there. And that's one of the challenges of boondocking on the East Coast. There's just always people, There's always, it's people live there. But yeah, don't be afraid to ask locals. Oftentimes locals can be very helpful, locals and rangers. I'm gonna give you some tips, just a few things I learned. I found a great campsite just completely by accident next to a Civil War cemetery in Tennessee. Some of you were shaking your head. You saw that video. Um, that was, and that was just exploring a road. So, and I, actually, as I was driving on that road, I was like, okay, I got to tell people this. This is how I found this. No mailboxes. So if you're traveling, because traveling through the national forest east of the Mississippi does not guarantee you're going to find a place to camp because people live there. But a few signs that a road may lead to something that you can camp in if you haven't picked up the motor vehicle use map that Bob talked about is, you know, don't go down a road usually with mailboxes. You know, in the rural areas, they put all their mailboxes down here, right? So you're not gonna find boondocking there. Power lines. Um, I followed a road that didn't look like there was anything down there for miles. And I was like, oh, there's gonna be great boondocking down here, but there were power lines and sure as, Sure enough, there was a, a, a private retreat all the way at the end. So look for something that doesn't have mailboxes. Look for something that doesn't have power lines. Look for forest route markers. You know, the brown route markers that have forest road numbers. In case you didn't know, they have forest route numbers. Look for those. You know, you're going to be able to go down those usually. And that's it. national forest. You might be able to find something. And don't be afraid to get out and explore by foot. My rule for driving a 29-foot Class C into public lands, and especially the windy haulers and all of that, was never get into something you can't back out of. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, my limit was kind of like a quarter of a mile. I don't care how windy and how uproad it was, I could probably back Matilda up a quarter of a mile. And so I'd go a quarter of a mile and like hold my breath, please be a turnout, please be a turnout. And I'd find a turnout, and I'd be like, okay, I can turn around there if I had to. So I'd go another quarter mile. 
please be a turnout because oh my god i don't want to have to back out of here please be a turnout and there might be another turnout and that's and, and then a couple times it'd be like okay i'm not pushing my luck any further i'm going to park her in this turnout and i'm going to get out and walk and um tennessee i did that and it was i i, I would have gotten stuck if i tried to go any further i would have actually had to back up so don't be afraid to explore i think that's my biggest advice to anyone who is going to be out here looking for what i call million dollar views for free and if you really want the solitude and the sun and the and the signal and you really like to kind of get away from it all be fearless be smart but be fearless be curious explore uh you know for me that's what this is all about kind of coming out and being able to explore and go i mean i love pushing limits and seeing how far i can go and for anybody who's camped with me they're like yeah but wow you know so uh don't be afraid to do that explore by foot explore by bike try not to get stuck i who saw that video last year i think it was in moab that was it a class a or a class c and they almost fell off oh boy yeah that thing went viral that was that was um pretty scary lucky they didn't fall over the edge and the first night, you know, don't settle. If you were in an area and it is getting kind of late, go ahead and park and then go explore on foot and explore all the nooks and crannies of the roads or if you have a bike or if you have a scooter and you never know what you might find. And for me, uh, I, a couple of my backpacking friends always, whenever we were looking for something, it would be like, well, let's keep going because we got to see what's around the next corner. So we always got to see what's around the next corner. And sometimes it's an amazing, amazing view and an amazing boondocking spot. Always have a way out. You really recommend just always being able to back out. Can you even back up in a trailer? Yeah. You can? Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I'd want to do it on a windy road though, huh? Yeah, okay, all right. So I think that is it. Any questions? Yes. How do you find where to get a permit on BLM land? On BLM land, generally you don't need a permit if a permit is required on BLM land, you're going to see you're going to see signs. Actually, coming in here is a great example. I think it said, uh, "What's the name of this wash?" Scan it. Yeah, scan it. What is it? Scan it. Wash. So you're you're going to know. And as far as national forests, again, if you well, you don't need for you don't need permits in most national forests. But whatever public land you're going into, first step always, even if you pull in there and you're camped. This is I've done this. You, you're pulled in, you're in a national forest, you didn't expect to end up there and you know it's beautiful and you wanna stay. Hopefully if you have a cell signal, start researching. I've done that, am I legal? Where do I need to go? And if I need to move, I can move. If I need to go to a ranger station, I can go to a ranger station. If you can't do that, if you don't have a cell signal, if you can't make a phone call, um, I would recommend going into town, finding the ranger station or at least looking up online before you settle in to, just to make sure you're legal. Uh, yes. I show some of the drama in my videos, but I show it to kind of make a point that I think our, I think we're conditioned to be afraid. I think that there is so much in our society and I, I'm getting a little kind of on my soapbox about this, but you asked, but I think we're often conditioned to toe the line, stay put, do what we're told. And so we're taught to fear things outside of that little comfort zone. I, in my experience, I have, and in my, in my videos, I show, oh my God, this big truck came in the middle of the night. Oh my gosh, and it was scary because we're told to fear this because, you know, everybody tells us that they're up to no good, but what's the end result? Every time something like that happens to me, what's the end result? I'm here talking about it. Nothing happened. So as far as overcoming the fear, I, I actually think I did a video or a blog about it. Get to the campsite early so that you know, so that you're, you're kind of comfortable with the area before it gets dark. Walk around, go for a walk. It helps me to kind of walk a couple mile perimeter and also for Capone. Capone needs to do that too so that he realizes this is our new home and in case he chases something, he knows how to get back. So walk the perimeter, get to know what's around you. This was really important for me in Mississippi. I was really scared in the very dense, very loud forest in the back country of Mississippi and so I went out and I walked. And if you walk and realize there's nobody cooking meth out there, you're gonna be a lot more comfortable or there's no like Unabomber in a cabin spying on you. Um, you know, I always talked about this in a, as a backpacker. People are like, how do you go backpacking alone? 
Nobody's going to hike 50 miles into the wood to chop me up in little pieces and eat me. The chances, the statistics, statistically, they're going to have much more success in a city, right? Oh, I'm going to hike into the woods today and maybe I'll find somebody to chop up and eat. Or I can go into a city and I know I'll find somebody. So, you know, it's just statistically, being out there alone, you are much safer than you are in any city anywhere. Um, <laughs> Go outside at night. Step outside of your rig after dark. Look at the sky, stand there, listen, get used to the sounds, and walk around your rig. It's gonna be scary. I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna be freaking scared. But you know what? Once you do it, you're gonna be much less afraid than if you're sitting inside going, what's out there? Because you're gonna know, I was out there. There's nothing out there, right? Does that help? Yep. And remember, nothing out here wants to hurt me. And it's true. All right, that's it. That's my secrets, my tips, my tricks, the rules, the regulations. That's everything you need to know to be able to legally, comfortably, safely, and uh, funly, <laughs> and to have fun camping and living on public lands. I hope you found that really helpful. I'd love to hear from you. So please leave your comments below. What was your favorite part or what are some of your tips and tricks for finding the best places to camp, okay? Uh, and if you like this video, if you found my information, my experience, my philosophies on this lifestyle and society in general interesting, please subscribe here. Give this video a like and share it with all your friends. Are you ready to see this amazing survival kit by American Standard Premium? Wait till you see everything that is in here. This thing is amazing. First of all, and it's not very heavy for everything that's in here. It's not very heavy. It just unzips and check this out. You open it up and look at everything that's in here. So I'm gonna go through just a few. There's 198 survival emergency uh, items in here that you can that you need I, I don't know i think this would be good to have anywhere in your car they say in your office in your home if you're a survivalist or you're a prepper or you're an explorer or a camper or a four-wheeler or a horse rider anybody who likes to go off uh, an adventure i definitely think this is something worth taking with you and look how light it is uh, on one side here, there's all kinds of bandages and uh, triangular bandages. There's an abdominal pad in here. There's band-aids, adhesive band bandages. So that's in there and it Velcros on. And then here you've got gloves. So you've got first aid gloves. There's two packages of those. There's this, which I think is probably like a tourniquet maybe, or just some kind of, I'm not gonna open it because this is the one I'm gonna give away, uh, but maybe a sling or something like that. I don't know, probably multi-use. Two Mylar blankets, so two first aid blankets. I think two, yeah. And they zip up so everything stays nice and neat. And then check this out. This is my favorite one. So you've got some rope. You have a saw, a little, one of these little like chainsaw things. I guess I can open that in case you've never seen one of these, but I think that's what it is. Yeah, it is, it's a saw. So you go like this and you can saw something. How cool is that? So seriously, like if you get stranded somewhere <laughs> and you need to survive for a while, you have a little saw with you for firewood. Maybe you can even build a cabin with this. <laughs> Just kidding. Here is a mouth guard if you need to uh, perform CP CPR on somebody and you don't want to get up, <laughs> you don't want to get their cooties. There's a mouth guard for CPR. There is a flint and a striker so that you can start a fire. Look at this. There's even a little Leatherman tool with, is that a flashlight? I think it has a little flashlight on it. It has little pliers. It's got uh, screwdrivers on it. So yeah, it's even got a little Leatherman tool in here. How cool is that? It's got surgical, it's got, it's got little scissors. It has a whistle. <laughs> it's got tweezers, safety pins. Oh, and a, uh, what is this thing called? A razor blade. Flares, right? These are flares and a little sewing kit. Uh, so gosh, look at everything in here. All right, that's that pocket. I'm just gonna stuff it back in here real quick. And you've got alcohol pads, burn cream, 
Neosporin-like antibacterial stuff. You've got some Q-tips in here, so just more, more uh, first aid stuff. You've got ice packs. You've got two ice packs in here, instant ice packs, so you just massage them or whatever. And two, two rain ponchos. <laughs> Look at everything in this tiny little kit. It's only 30 bucks on Amazon, and I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video so that if you're interested in checking it out and you wanna buy one or a few, I really think this is really awesome to have. I am gonna give this one away. I already gave one away at an event at the RTR, and I have one more to give away. All you have to do is like this video, and you can do that below the video. Hit the thumbs up. You need to be a subscriber to this channel, and share this video and then go to the comments of this section and just do hashtag shared. You do not need to post a link to your social media profile on the comments because I know a lot of people didn't want to do that for privacy and I totally understand. But when I pick the winner, you will be required to send me the link to your social media profile to confirm that you shared this video before I send it out. So how does that sound? I will be announcing the winner in a video next Sunday February 4th 2018 at 9 p.m. Eastern Time in the United States you must be a US resident in order to win this and the official rules and regulations will be in the video description below so again I will be announcing the winner in a video Sunday February 4th at 9 p.m. when I announce your name you will then have 24 hours to contact me with your contact information and I'll give all of the instructions for that in the video on the 4th and once you contact me I will verify that you shared the video and then this will be on your way so again 198 piece emergency kit this thing is pretty awesome check it out in the Amazon links below and again if you like this video please subscribe to my channel for more fun more adventure more philosophies on the RV life thank you so much we'll see you soon and I hope you can get out there and enjoy all these beautiful public lands that we have um, at your disposal for camping and enjoying. I'll see you next time, and in the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. Mwah.